Hey, it's NPR's Book of the Day. I'm Andrew Limbong. I'm generally suspect when people try to draw parallels between the political divisions we've got in the country today and the American Civil War. But in today's interview, Pulitzer Prize-winning biographer John Meacham brings up a point about divinity that might sway me. His new book is a biography of Abraham Lincoln called And There Was Light, Abraham Lincoln and the American Struggle. Lincoln's obviously had a book or two written about him before, but this one really digs in on Lincoln's beliefs about slavery. Meacham gets talking to NPR's Steve Inskeep about how faith and belief in God was at once a driving force for freedom, but also an impediment to democratic rule. The historian John Meacham has known a few presidents. He wrote a biography of George H.W. Bush and sometimes writes speeches for Joe Biden. Meacham says many presidents see Abraham Lincoln as a role model. Lincoln was a politician, but he was a politician who ultimately was driven by conscience. This is my entire argument. If he had solely been a cynical political creature, he would have made radically different decisions at critical points. Meacham's book, And There Was Light, tells of the anti-slavery politician whose election as president in 1860 triggered the Civil War. Lincoln struck back at the rebel states by ordering freedom for their enslaved workers, the Emancipation Proclamation. But the first Republican president was fiercely criticized by people who wanted less social change. And in 1864, he had to face the voters for re-election. Henry Raymond, the editor of the New York Times and the chairman of the Republican National Committee, comes to the White House. He has said that the tide is setting against us and that if Lincoln wants to win re-election, he must give up emancipation as a precondition for peace. Meacham's book reconstructs that moment. Lincoln's party had done badly in the midterm elections. Lincoln himself even wrote a private note forecasting his own defeat. He was urged to appeal to conservative voters by making some statement that he would back off his continued push for freedom. And Lincoln said no, that he had made his position clear. He was willing to go down politically for that principle. How did Lincoln think through that moment in, say, the summer of 1864? He believed that slavery was wrong. He believed that he was right. He fundamentally understood that politics could not simply be about the amassing and keeping of power. It was about the amassing, keeping, and utilization of power. And I think the utility of it for us is that, not that he's perfect, but that here's a frail human being who didn't always get everything right, who in that critical hour transcended his limitations, transcended his ambitions, transcended his appetites to do the right thing. And fortunately, it was rewarded by events. But he didn't know that. After refusing to retreat on slavery, Lincoln won the election anyway. And months later, his side won the war. In part, his calculation was ruthlessly practical. Men freed from slavery were joining the Union Army. Meacham argues the decision was also moral. Lincoln spoke of God a lot, although he was never a member of a church. His first inaugural address appealed to the better angels of our nature. And when that failed, his second inaugural address portrayed the war as God's punishment. In the second inaugural, Lincoln says that the Civil War came because of slavery and because slavery was a sin and that God himself seemed to be adjudicating the weight of that sin in real time. So religion was both a rallying cry, it provided a predicate for the North, for the anti-slavery forces, and let us be very clear, and this is resonant today, it also provided a intellectual prop to slave owners who wanted to believe that slavery was divinely ordained. Well, that's part of this speech, too. He acknowledges that both sides believed that God was on their side, but I believe he also suggests they may be both wrong. He says both pray the same God, both ask for victory over the other. The prayers of neither have been fully answered. 
what is perennially frightening is that in American politics, in American culture, people do claim divine sanction for what they want to do. And if you claim divine sanction for what you want to do, that makes compromise very difficult. If you believe you are doing God's work, unless you do it with an immense amount of humility, that becomes a stumbling block within a democratic context in a way that is very, very troubling. At the same time, religion has been one of the great forces for reform and liberty in the country. My view of this, which I think is also the way Lincoln articulated, was that religion is going to be part of the human experience in the same way economics are always a part or geography. And so the question is, how do you manage and marshal religious feeling, not try to remove it? There is a conscience and you want to do everything you can to be in accord with this universal law of treating others as you would be treated. And that may sound simplistic, but I firmly believe, and I argue in this, that that was Lincoln's moral vision. And it's also, it has the virtue of being a durable political vision. John, I want to anticipate a question I think you're going to get a lot. You're going to go out, you're going to do public events, you're going to do interviews in our current political environment. You've got this book that dwells on the Civil War. I think people are going to ask you, do you think we're heading for a civil war? Tragically, I think we will see more of civil chaos. I think we're going to see it with violence. I do not believe we're going to see the massing of great armies in the way we did in the 19th century. But we are at greater risk. And part of it is that there is a passionate minority that is putting its own interests ahead of those of the nation and the nation as defined with that kind of moral sensibility we've discussed. But I'm fundamentally hopeful in this sense that we have stared into the abyss before and just enough of us have decided to do the right thing. And as Lincoln said about our better angels, those better angels won't prevail unless we enlist ourselves in the cause too. John Meacham is the author of And There Was Light, Abraham Lincoln and the American Struggle. Thanks so much. Thank you, Steve.